The stones are great, and a magic power they have. Men that are sick fare to that stone, and they wash that stone, and with that water bathe away their sickness. The placebo effect has been known about for ages and always been considered hugely important. Um, in the history of medicine, the great monument Stonehenge may actually have been a kind of placebo hospital, a place to which people came in order to receive faith cures. What they did, we believe, is to touch the stones and through them absorb, as they believed, some magically potent medicine. But it's only recently that uh, science has begun to gri get to grips with what's actually going on when people respond to placebo treatments by reducing their sense of pain involves the use of the endogenous opiates, our own internal painkillers, a drug rather like morphine which we release in order to control pain. What's always interested me though is the other question, the real mystery, not how they work, actually why placebos work. If you think about it from the point of view of evolution, a placebo effect is actually rather paradoxical because when we get better under the influence of a placebo, of course, we're curing ourselves. That's what a placebo is by definition. It's an inert substance. But if we can cure ourselves of an illness, then why don't we just do it? Why don't we just get on with it? Why do we need to wait for permission from a, a sugar pill or a, a quack doctor or a snake oil? The only reason we don't, and this must be the explanation, is that it isn't actually in our interests to cure ourselves immediately, whatever the circumstances. Lots of the things we count as illness, pain or fever or nausea for that matter, are not actually illnesses in their own right. They're evolved defenses which we put up against illness. Um, and of course, we don't want to undermine them. We don't want to lose pain when in fact it's protecting us from further injury. We don't want to stop feeling sick when our bodies are full of toxins. We don't want to relax a fever when we've got bacteria to deal with, can't stand the high temperatures which we're developing as a defense in our own body. So let's think about the costs and the benefits of, let's say, feeling pain. A little boy falls over in the playground and badly bruises and grazes his knee. It hurts. He cries. He sits there and waits for help. That's a very adaptive response. The pain is bringing benefits. It's going to stop him making things worse. It's going to stop him opening up the, the wound. It's also going to summon help. But, of course, it's also considerably a costly thing to do. Um, if that pain continues too long, you know, he's not going to be able to get on with his life. He's not going to be able to feed himself. He's not going to be able to run away from a predator if one turned up. Now his mother turns up, takes him in her arms, kisses it better. He feels safe now and he doesn't actually need to feel the pain to the extent he did to protect himself. He's going to be protected by his family from now on. The effect of that is that suddenly the benefits of the pain have been reduced. It's not essential anymore. His mother has allowed him to readjust the equation and now the benefit of the pain goes down, the cost of the pain exceeds the benefit Bingo, the pain reduces. Okay, so that's when his mother turns up. She's a genuine safety signal. But suppose now that some quite spurious signal turns up. Supposing he sees a poster up on the wall saying, okay, you're being looked after by the great god Elmo. Don't worry about anything. You'll be all right. Elmo will look after you. Now that's fake information. And nonetheless, the boy may respond just as he would to the genuine information that he's in safe hands by reducing his pain. In effect, he'll have responded to a placebo medicine. We could be receiving a false safety signal and it's still going to be just as effective in getting us to reduce our pain or to reduce our fever. Now, you'll see from the story I've been telling that actually, I'm saying that placebos are a mistake. We're doing something which is potentially maladaptive when we respond to false information in order to lower our guard, let down our defenses. And I think we have to accept that in the past, the evolutionary past, that indeed might have been a very bad idea. We'd have been curing ourselves prematurely when it wasn't actually safe to do so.
Um, today, we have much greater levels of social support, good diets, warmth, comfort, uh, med access to medications and so on. And so we really can afford to let down our guard in ways in which we couldn't in the past. We don't need to be as careful as we used to be. And so indeed, a dose of contrived optimism, which is basically what placebos provide, could be just what the doctor ordered.